you there. All right, guys. Section five. Authorization. So uh, all the searches that we have done up until section four are public searches. That means you have access to this as a user. You don't even need to log in. It's publicly available. So you can make requests within reason, obviously, within reason. You're going to get rate limited. But some of these requests, like if you were hitting your local enterprise Devtopia or your private GitHub, uh, repo you need to get authorized you, you get up really need to know who are you okay authorize or authenticate essentially okay so with that said let's just jump into this section and then learn about this how about that guys all right guys so I have created a new account here called Hussein test user and I have to create two repos sandbox public and sandbox private and private is actually a private repo right and the sandbox public is a public repo so anyone can test it so what i'm going to do here is go back to this uh, uh the code that we have written instead of uh calling issues on the free code camp i'm going to point it to my private repo and see what will happen okay so let's just copy the code here i think uh, so we don't mess up the existing code here so i'm going to call github git issues private okay and then i am going to create a, a brand new button gold issues private right and then issues private okay and then literally just do copy paste button issues private button issues private and then let's finalize this the event listener and we should be good to go issues private we are ready guys we are ready to start testing this thing okay so issues private are we calling the issues private function no let's call it git issues private there you go that's one function yeah all right so git issues private where is it where is it my git issues private function did i copy it i don't see it all right, let's just copy. Oh, there you go. Get issues private. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here is go there. And instead of, I don't, uh, authors, we don't really need an author here. Remove the author. Just give me repo Hussein test. And then I think it's called sandbox private. Okay. And then literally give me all the issues that is in this repo. Okay. So if I do this, I don't get any results. Although, are there any issues? Let's, let's, let's make sure there are at least some issues there. I think there is, there is one issue here. Yeah, I created this. No one can see this. So I have one issue here called no one can see this. So let's see if we can actually... All right, so if I make a request here to my private repos and I told you, okay, give me all the private issues here. Okay, I'm going to get the URL gonna get the response but I'm gonna get an error unprocessable entity and you're gonna get all kind of different errors sometimes you're gonna get unauthorized sometimes you're gonna get this unprocessable entity something bad happened and most of the time this is because you're not authenticated okay and uh, it's it's very very straightforward error and it's it's really simple to fix so one way of fixing this is to add another header okay and this header is called the uh, the authorization header so in order to do that we're gonna declare a headers object here and then literally called remember we had accept at one point this thing is called authorization okay and then there are two methods of authorization there is the we're gonna we're gonna talk about them today there is the the basic method okay which was started by basic and by basic, basically you send the username and password unencrypted, right? In a plain text format. And then that's that's essentially bad. But you can do it in this. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you both methods. I'm gonna re reveal my password because my because I don't really care. It's a it's a new account that I have created. I'm gonna change the password anyway after that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just just for science, guys. I'm gonna show you this for science. So what's my username? My username is called Hussein Test. And then this is my password, const password, equal, 
and uh, <laughs> this is just a trick for you guys like uh, back in the days when we especially for us bilingual like if, we, if you know another language it's really good to use passwords right it's really good uh, for passwords so basically this is actually a, a word in arabic but if you type it in the keyboard that is english you, you you end up with a garbage right so it's eh, it's like an old way it was like back in the 90s that's what always the password when languages were not even supported in the web okay so that's my password here that's the username don't 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 get your hope as up i'm gonna change the password after a while so that's, that's just an idea all right so here's what you're gonna do basic you're gonna do the authorization you have to add basic and then space after that and then just add the base 64 you have to convert into a string the hexadecimal string using the base 64 and in the browser there is a method called b2a you can literally do that okay and then you do literally username okay which is that variable plus this and then plus password okay this is one way of doing it another way to use the beautiful uh, <laughs> ticks here instead. So you can do something like that. That's actually much, much better. I prefer this method, right? You can just do ticks here, do a tick, and then what are you gonna do is essentially do that, and then you just get rid of all this stuff. That's much like it. I like this better. So that's how you basically send an, a plain text authorization. We're going to talk about token in a minute, but let's see that. So headers, obviously, you have to pass them through the Fitch API, then another object, right? Method. We're still getting stuff. We don't post anything. We didn't change in the state of the server. And we pass in the headers. The headers is literally headers. Sweet, guys, authorization. That should do the trick. Let's do it. Let's see if this works. And good. The password. We got 200, baby. 200 means everything is coolish. Coolish stuff. We got one item, and the item says there is an issue. And no one can see it. And the title of this issue is No one can see this. Yeah, right. Right, everyone with this password can see it now. All right, this is one way of doing authorization. What's the second way? The second way, guys, is the proper way, well, at least one proper way. There are, there are more than one way, but this is another way of doing it, which is like more secure. And you go to your settings, right? Developer settings. Okay, let's go. Let's do this again. Menu. Damn it. Settings. <laughs> and then developer settings. And then you basically click on personal access tokens. That's one way of doing it. There are you can create your application as an app. As maybe this is a better way. But I already have a, a, a token here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one. I'm gonna create a brand new one. Brand spanking you one. So what's the password? No one knows it. <laughs> All right. So here's the cool thing about this. You can do like a test, uh, GitHub, whatever. You can give it a name, okay? The token description. And then you can give this token kind of access. Like, what do you want this token to do? You want access to all repos, like the private, uh, like, like the issues and all that stuff? Do you want them to write, read, admin write? Do you want public key? Do you want user access? Do you want, what do you want to do, right? In my case, I'm only interested in this, right? This access token will only do this, right? So you can only do that, right? Just like, let's call this read token, whatever, okay? And then generate token. And you're going to get this nice string you copy that because that's the only time you can copy it otherwise like you, you will never see it again okay you will copy this peppy okay and then instead of using the username and password okay what uh, what you're gonna do is essentially use tokens okay so 
Uh, how about we do another button, guys? Here, let's copy this thing. I want to do another way, so so we can just copy this thing. Let's just comment this out, right? I want you to have access to the, all the code, right? And here's what you do. It's still an authorization, but the difference is it's a token authorization instead of basic, right? I think you can just do token. It doesn't have to be capital. And then literally space and then do that, okay? Obviously, you, guys, you want to do this as a config so you can have it. All right, and then get the headers. What do you do with the headers? You pass it in, and this should just magically work, okay? Magically work. Let's test that thing. No one can see this. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Look at that. This is now the token access. That's how we do token access, guys. We didn't use the password, remember? This is what we sent. If I do network, I want to show you both now what happens in the network. I forgot to do that. If I click, click here, you click this guy, and then you can see the request authorization token. That's what we sent. That's what we're sending right now. But if I flipped this thing, right? Right, to the basic authentication. Let's click here. Now make a request. You can see that this is the hex. Uh, this is the base sixty four uh, decimal that we are sending. That's the string that we're sending. It's a plain text. If you can decode this, literally, it's a reversible thing. Okay. If you took this, I think if you do A to B. A to B, you do that, you get back the password. Think of that. My password on the internet. How amazing. Right? I don't think anyone does that. <laughs> it's just me and this channel. All right, guys. Yeah.